call this meeting to order. All right, um, opening ceremony. Our mission is to foster academic and social growth for each student in a safe, supportive school environment. Our vision is to be a learning community that inspires our students and staff to think critically, grow intellectually, and live with integrity. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item three, do we have any additions to the agenda? No. no so. Okay. Any uh, motion to approve the agenda? I'll move. Do I have a second? And I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. On to the approval of minutes for the regular meeting on June 20th, 2022. The special meetings that were June 22nd, June 30th, July 9th, and July 10th of 2022. Just a note, um, we did have an amendment. We need to add the um, motion to adjourn what's done by Jamie on July 9th. The second was by me. Do we need a motion for, to approve them? Yes, to approve the change. Um, not to approve the change. Okay. Just so just an motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. All right, and for administrative report, we have Dr. Diamond. I am sitting in for Dr. Banks since she is on vacation and returns later this week. Um, and we do not have any district update currently. I know she's working on a community update and staff update that will go out in very early August that has information about a lot of our new hires, um, some restructuring that's happening, and things like our kickoff event that will be happening for the new building. So that will be soon. All right, uh, moving right along then to number six, public address. We do have one, so I will read. Um, the board believes it is in its best interest and the best interest of the students of the district to hear comments from members of the public. It has been, therefore, a long-standing practice of the board to encourage and allow residents to speak at the public meeting. This may be done by completing a bottom portion of this form and giving it to the board president prior to the board meeting. All right, uh, the board welcomes Malcolm Timmons. You have five minutes. Welcome five minutes. <coughs> okay, my name is Malcolm Timmons. I uh, live in the neighborhood. Right, water. Some people say it's been in town, some say it's College Hill, tomatoes, tomatoes. Once you go down Kirkland, Plantation, College Hill, Orleans, Court, College Hill, but if you keep down Kirkland, still Finney Town, so that's here or there. So, uh, I live in the neighborhood and I'm going up and down Wind Road and I see the new school, which I thought was great. So I'm thinking to myself, man, this place had to have a, a state-of-the-art HVAC system because you know with all the things with COVID and people breathing, I said, let me see if they have something else today I can bring to them. So we have a business called the Air Surface Pro and it just helps clean the air and just filter out. Um, I don't want to sound like the boogeyman here, but I see things starting to, to surface again. Some people want to wear masks. You don't want to get into the vaccine debate. Me personally, I have both shots of boost. That's just me. But I think that I just really want to uh, leave the board some information about the Air Surface Pro. Let you, let you guys look over and see what you think about it. Uh, it's a really good thing. Um, this company was around like 75 years before we even got involved in it. And their main thing was people that deal with allergies and stuff with, with asthma things. But when the pandemic hit, it really took off because it cleans the air. And we know that's what viruses does. So we got it out and it, it's, people start buying all over the country. Things kind of settled down, but people still have breathing issues. They still need our product. So I just thought I would bring it to you guys and let you all see it. So, I mean, it's a... I can't, well, it's more than five minutes, but, well, I'm sorry, let me say that. It's only two minutes, actually, 
The only way you could really see it, I would have to give each one of you all one of these brochures, and once you scan the QR code, it's like a two-minute video to tell you all about all the scientific stuff that you and I probably wouldn't know, but when you hear it, it sounds good. So I will leave that with you all. Um, other than that, um, my thing with this virus, I think that we should be doing more. That's just me. But you can't push that on people. So this is what I have for you all. And I'll, I'll stop right there. Thank you. No further public address, moving on to board coordination. Um, before we go into each of our own things, we were going to start with a discussion on creating and naming of a board committee um, for the purpose of facilitating dialogue and conversation within our diverse communities to better understand our needs and opportunities around diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is something that we discussed at our board retreat on July 9th. It's something that we feel is um, important to our district. It's important to our students. It was, uh, we think it's a really great idea where we're going to have a board community that is going to reach out to the community and gather input from all of the diverse groups within our district uh, regarding what they think is important or where we need to improve, um, maybe some things that we're not aware of. So for us, we need a name. And then, oh, so what we're going to start with is we have an application process. Tony was pulling together his application process that he already knows about. He did send that to me. I have it. I, um, it needs to be adjusted to meet our needs, but I will send it out to everybody now that I have it. Um, and then we are going to request applications from the community to lead the committee. It will be two people leading the committee that we will choose. And then from there, we will have applications turned in. Those two leaders will choose their um, core team to go about asking these questions. But we need a name for this committee. So what do we got? And what did you mention, Jamie? You I just mentioned uh, the Active Community Engagement Committee. Uh, you know, former government, government employee loving three-letter acronyms, the, the ACE Committee could be something. One thing I do want to say though, the committee itself is a board committee, so it will be hosting those gatherings in public, uh, and the entire purpose of it will be open to the community for people to speak. So anyone can attend those those meetings as well. But that, that's what I had uh, as a suggestion. I may have some more. Mine are kind of, I don't know, might be kind of wonky. All Wildcats succeed. I have Finneytown We Stand, Finneytown Diversity Network, um, Beyond Differences, Finneytown, Finneytown, um, uh, can't read my handwriting, I don't know what I wrote there, Wildcats Diversity Network, um, Wildcat Tapestry, and Beyond Wildcat Differences. So those really good those, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think my favorite one out of those is probably the Beyond Differences, Finneytown. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then there was another one that you read toward the end. Um, Beyond Wildcat Differences. Yeah. I like both of those. Okay. Um, I like Jamie's as, as, as well. I think Jamie's is very... We could go to a fourth four-letter acronym with the Finneytown Active Community Engagement and then it's FACE. My, only, well, my only idea was uh, just the We Are Finneytown Committee. Um, but that's fairly simple. Can they take a vote? <laughs> Um, well that's five of them. So how do we want to go about deciding? We could delay the start of it a little bit and have a vote from the community if we wanted. I don't know if it's really going to bring a lot, yeah. yeah, especially in the summer right now. Um, and it would be quicker for us to start the process if we were to go ahead and name it here. But we have a special meeting coming up before the next board meeting. We do, but that meeting already has a very large agenda okay. full of um, critical topics because it's also the security gotcha. discussion. Um, 
I really liked All Wildcats Succeed and the Beyond Differences of Any Town. So do we want to stick with those Jamie, two? Jamie, could you read yours again? Jamie? Mine was just the, the I add, change it at the end. Thanks. The Finneytown Active Community Engagement Committee. I'm open to whatever. I'm I like that one in the Beyond Differences Finneytown. Okay. We're down to two. Active community, face, Finneytown, active community engagement, and Beyond Differences Finneytown. Um, the only real difference I see, I, I like both of those, but I like having it where you could call it face, because that's easier to remember. I think face is pretty good too, because it kind of does say that those people are the what face of Finneytown. Um, I, right, I agree the acronym helps and mm -hmm. I like the face. I liked the Wildcat Tapestry myself, so, um, I like, and I like Beyond Differences Finneytown too. I, I, I'm not sure if active community engagement necessarily on its face uh, makes it <laughs> clear that it's about diversity, equity, inclusion, whereas Beyond Differences or even take the tapestry to moonlight. That, that, that's a good point. Things. Yeah. What do you think, Dave? I like what Jen just said. <laughs> I, like, I like the beyond differences. Dave's never I think said that's that. Do we have a consensus so. about the beyond differences? Do we, do we all agree? All right. Announcing the new board community or <laughs> board committee. Do we need an official vote? Beyond? On the no, we don't. We not don't. from what I, not okay. from what Tony told me. Beyond right. differences, Finneytown. All right. Perfect. Applications will be posted soon. Cool. All right. So board coordination from anyone else who wants to start? I don't have a whole lot. I just wanted to say um, I was really excited about our retreat that we just had. Um, special thanks to everybody for coming out. We had Grant Anderson, um, Eric, and Dave, and all of us came together, and Laurie came together and I feel like we just, it was, it was good for us, you know. It was a, a moment where we shed some tears and um, we all opened up um, and I, I think it made a difference. So I just wanted to say thanks for everybody making that possible. Cindy was also there. Um, I got to listen to a podcast by Dr. Paul Johnson and he's a profess, uh, professor over at, um, it's at Bowling Green and it was just basically, it was a good podcast, it was about um, how to prov provide support to your superintendent and how boards do make a difference with the superintendent if it's done the correct way and just talking about it being a partnership, um, just a hand in glove relationship and I thought it was very helpful. Um, I can send it to you guys if you're interested. And it also recommended doing continuing education courses which we've been doing, um, which was good to hear. Also, tax-free weekend is coming up on August the 5th. Um, that starts at noon, and that will go until August 7th. So, that's pretty much all I had. It's been kind of light with it being the summer with the PTA, so yeah. be back in gear in the next couple months. <coughs> uh, I'd like to, uh, last month uh, I made a no vote uh, here in the board, and think yeah, I should be explaining why when I make a no vote. I did not do that last month. It was regards to uh, Mr. Muchmore and it was presented as his salary. Uh, my no vote was not about the salary. My no vote was about the position title and the job description and I think it's fiscally irresponsible for the school board to have that position. So that's why I was voting no for it. And if we're filling it, if the position is going to happen, I think there should be someone different in the role. That was why I made the vote that I made last month. And my committees, no one met uh, that, that I, I was able to attend. Uh, and unfortunately for the tax-free weekend, I'm gonna be in Canada, so I'm gonna be paying wicked taxes uh, when I'm up there. That's very good idea. Do you have right. anything? Yeah, I'll go next. I just wanted to thank uh, our administrators that came out on, uh, well, a few administrators were there on, uh, on Saturday, uh, and we had some administrators out on Sunday. So, sp so special thanks to, uh, to Grant and Eric and Lori and Dave uh, for taking time out of your weekend that, that you would have spent with your family and also just a thank you to the rest of the board members for um, for coming out and spending time away from your families too um, 
So I just appreciated being able to get together with all of you. I feel like we got a lot of good work done. We still have more work to do. Um, but I think it got the ball rolling on a lot of really great conversations. Um, also, I wanted to say uh, there was not a um, Finneytown Music Parents Association meeting this month that we attended. Um, unfortunately, we missed that. But I think it was a relatively light agenda. Um, and then the uh, long-term facilities planning uh, committee also did not meet this month. Um, and uh, with Lindsay, if you will, I think we've already shared the bad news, but just to reiterate that we're not getting our funding for the uh, secondary campus project, uh, at least not for the next uh, six months to a year is what it looks yeah. like. So, and it's, it's not just for the secondary, um, because that's where I think it's going to get misconstrued. It is the whole project, the elementary and the secondary campus. They are funding 60% of it. The funding has not changed as far as that, but there is no guaranteed date of when we get that. And I know that that's been a point of contention that the community has addressed with us several times. Um, we haven't had a date from the start. So um, that's, that's not new. We did expect it, hopefully, by this, this fiscal year calendar. But um, so far, we have not gotten it yet. It covers 60% of both schools. We just, our funding happened to be enough to cover the elementary school, which is why we could go ahead and start on that before we had our funding from the state. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully soon. Thank you. That's all I have for my update. Okay. Yeah, so FMPA did meet, but I uh, have to give my apology. I was not able to attend. Um, I was planning to be there, but unfortunately, right before the actual meeting, <laughs> I realized I didn't have the address to go and um, wasn't able to get a hold of anyone, unfortunately. So um, my apologies. I meant to be there. I just didn't know where to go. They are having a golf outing, though. They are asking, please sign up. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. They have reiterated, you don't have to know how to golf. You don't have to be good at golf. You just have to know how to have fun. That is the only request that they had. Um, it looks like it's going to be a great time. So if you need details on the golf outing, I do have them. Um, Eddie probably has them as well. We can get that for you. Uh, the personnel committee has met a couple of times. We've been hard at work finalizing the plans with the org chart, doing some um, role changes, shifting of roles, and we are finalizing a project that hopefully we can present next month um, that I think everyone on our staff is going to appreciate. Um, more to come on that. And then OSBA, uh, we do have the board guidebook. It is in process, so Cheryl is working on that and she'll send it out to us as soon as it's ready. Um, Grant, just a heads up, you may be getting questions on the website if she needs links. So I forgot to tell you that. Um, we're also doing a board self-assessment, so we decided that the first step of doing a self-assessment is to establish our mm -hmm. goals for the upcoming year, and we said we're gonna do those in September. Um, and then upcoming OSBA events, the Capitol Conference is November 13th through the 15th, so go ahead and mark your calendars. Registration opens July 25th. I highly recommend going to that. They do have an open house coming up. It's on August 7th at 2 p.m. at TriStar Career Compact. I don't know where that's at, but it's in our region. And then the 2022 annual Ohio School Safety Summit is coming up August 2nd through August 4th. It is free, it is in person, um, but that is something if anyone is interested in attending, um, I can get you details on. Um, there's a webinar on August 10th for accelerating student success through board policy. That looks really interesting to me. And the August Town Hall is August 25th. I haven't finished watching the OSBA Town Hall for June. It, um, it covers school safety, which I've already told Grant would be a good idea to watch um, anyone who's interested in that topic. It, it looks like it's gonna be covering a lot. Um, highly recommend watching that one. They have it on their um, website. And then July's town hall hasn't happened yet. Anything else for board coordination? Moving on to financial matters, um, do we have a motion to adopt the consent calendar or for discussion? I'll move. A second. Okay, um, item 
8.1 monthly financial report. So June does represent the end of the fiscal year. So we have final numbers. Uh, total revenue for the fiscal year in the general fund was $19,954,209. Total expenditures for the year, $20,154,786. The ending cash balance in the general fund was $13,144,231. And so expenditures exceeded revenues for the year by $200,000. The good news is that those expenditures did include a $3 million transfer to our building fund. And so I think we'd have to look at this as a, a very good year in terms of what we were able to accomplish. And um, the, uh, the expenditures were down. A lot of that is uh, due to ASSER funding be avail being available to us. And so a lot of things that we were doing um, met the requirements of that grant. And so uh, we were allowed to spend quite a bit of money on things that perhaps would have been spent out of the general fund. And so um, that is something to, to watch for years down the road in terms of um, coming off of that, that grant funding and, and moving um, you know, strictly to the general fund for uh, those activities. But um, we've got some detail here on, on the various line items. Um, are there any questions about anything that I can answer? So the portion that is lower due to the ESSER funding, is that the 792,000 number that you have there? If we hadn't had ESSER funding for those things, it would have, uh, our expenditures would have been right. that much yeah, more? Yeah, okay. right. I budgeted knowing that we'd be using ESSER, but you know, sparingly is the way I budgeted, mm -hmm. and we were able to use a lot more extra dollars. So, and um, could you give uh, the community a little bit of an idea of what those things were, what was included in those in those ESSER expenditures, just broad categories? Well, um, we use ESSER to hire staff, and so salaries and benefits. Um, and we didn't hire a tremendous about as, amount of staff, but of course, um, the, that is. Anytime you hire people, it's expensive, and so um, that was a, a big help to our budget. There are a lot of purchase services and equipment and supplies. Uh, most of these would be around the, the categories that uh, of learning loss um, and, and helping students regain, perhaps um, you know what may have uh, you know been lost as, re as a result of, of some of that time not in the classroom. So. Dr. Dinan, would you like to add in any way to, to that? Um, the learning loss, like we had the summer extended learning opportunity last summer. We have it again this summer. ESSER helps pay for that. Um, we have tutoring, like um, Shannon Ford, now Shannon Brown, worked in the building this year at Brent and offered tutoring, and so ESSER helped pay for that. Um, it did go towards some professional development for staff. And our, our expectation is that those funds are gone after? So um, there were three grants given. Um, the, uh, the first one expired this past June. We've got a next, another round that will expire a year from now. And then the final uh, funding will expire two years from now. Okay. So we do have several more years of that. Um, we are at least using the a lot of that last section to do the HVAC improvements, or actually is it the roof? <laughs> we talked about doing both. Uh, it's the roof we're doing, thank you. Um, so that's uh, about $700,000. But um, for the gym, yeah. So yeah, we, we have a lot of things planned for that money and it's, it's a big help to us. Great, thanks Dave. Okay, um, item B, depository investment balances as of June 30th, U.S. Bank. Um, $681,278. And I do not have the most recent version of the agenda in here, I'm sorry. Thanks to Mr. Ray for catching that and um, updating some of those. But um, thank you. Uh, Star Ohio, um, 
non-construction funds, $17,092,315.55. And then we've got another star, Ohio, and this is what I'm calling construction number two. This is $3,005,890.51. That's a $3 million transfer plus the interest that we run on that money since that time. Then we've got our U.S. Bank construction, which is uh, the money that was in invested for longer term. You can see it's earning a, a lower interest rate because interest rates are going up and that, that money is logged in. Um, but $4,885,495.77. And then Star Ohio, another fund for construction, $2,446,409.64. And for these funds, Dave, the, the interest rates are all locked in, so they're not changing with the current interest rates? The uh, Star Ohio interest Ohio. rates are floating, and so they, they will continue to rise as interest rates do. The, uh, the U.S. bank accounts, yeah, they're, they're fixed. They're, that's, what we're, you know, that's what they're going to earn. So, um, yeah. Item C, interest earned on depository investment accounts for June to general fund $16,670.55. Construction fund $6,109.29. So the, uh, in the financial reports, the, uh, the last page, I have information about our, our construction project. And um, two parts there, table one shows that we've expended $21 million on this project. You can see kind of a breakout, about $1.7 million on design, just over $19 million on construction, and then we've got several hundred thousand dollars in other type of items and soft costs. Um, but we are nearing completion of that project, but we have taken over the building. It is now ours, it's been released to us. Uh, certainly there is some work that's continuing. But um, you know, it's it's our building now, so a happy day. Um, part two uh, of the project shows that we do have um, some open purchase orders still out there, um, approximately two point seven million dollars, um, and then we have an uncommitted balance, which will continue to have things that we need to spend money on. Um, but you know, right now we're looking at about seven point six million dollars to kick off the, the next phase once the state money comes in and then there's some money to do some renovation work that's not part of the project that's included in this and so that would be a locally funded initiative type of, of spending so um, I think we're in good shape considering what's happened um, but you know, we'll see any questions we got our furniture yet yes I yeah. know at least some of it's been delivered has, has it all come in or yeah. Not all of it, but a lot of it. We're still missing the soft furniture. The soft furniture. Yeah. It's like the more flexible seating out in the um, common areas, like the home. Um, the wider hallways, but desks, tables, chairs, all of that is there. How's moving going? I've seen pictures. It's, yeah, they're all of the boxes got moved. There with my smartly we're on vacation that week so <laughs> yep it, they're in there and I know a lot of staff are excited to get in and start getting things moved yeah and they come in mid-August right is it August 15th yeah so um, I will mention also uh, there is another report in with um, that section and that's the uh, official certificate of estimated resources that was sent to the county auditor on June 28th and the, the board gave me the authority last month that this is that report yep. and it's what it shows is 50 million dollars in total resources that was available for expenditure and appropriation and so uh, that's there as well item e is a recommendation to approve permanent appropriation adjustments for the year just completed and uh, those amounts are in the revised agenda um, you'll see that most of them are reductions, um, but the total is uh, five hundred seventy-nine thousand dollar credit against these funds. So we're reducing um, income. Thank you. 
And item F is a recommendation tr to transfer funds. Uh, this is something that we do each and every year at this time. $2,000 to the band uniform replacement fund, $1,000 to the family involvement center fund. And uh, I think most of you are aware that the uh, band just emptied that account to buy new uniforms, which are expected um, in several months, and, and they'll be wearing those soon. But uh, So that is a, a very important contribution that we make along with uh, FMPA. They, they pay half. Then item G is a recommendation to approve petty cash accounts as listed. Item H is a recommendation to approve advances from the general fund into several grants as listed. Uh, that money will be returned um, in the new fiscal year. Could I ask Dave, on, for item uh, F, uh, the uh, Family Involvement Center Fund, uh, what is that? So. Um, that's just money to help facilitate the work. Um, we know how important it is to have parents, guardians, family involved in stuff, and so that, that's their mission, to help engage the families in it. So they'll have activities during the year, and so uh, they use this money to help make those events run a little smoother and um, attract people to them. Great, since I wasn't familiar with it. So. Is that something we could get a presentation from? the group to learn more about it. Yeah, yeah sure you can we reach can. out. Yeah. And you said the trip, sorry, on G, sorry, H, the money will be coming back to the general fund once those. Yeah, well, this is just temporarily, this, what this is allows us to do is to keep the fund balances positive at the end of the year when we do our financial reporting. But um, there was good reason to spend some of these funds. Uh, for instance, the high schools that work, had we not spent it by June 30th, we would give it back, we wouldn't be able to spend it. So, um, uh, you yeah, know, that's um, important. So all these were expenditures that we felt were important to make questions? All right. Can we get a roll call? Yes. Ms. McMullen? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Lee? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Moving on to item nine, superintendent's recommendations. Can I have a motion to adopt the consent calendar? I'll move. Second. So we see with item A, 9A, we had four resignations that have come through since we last met. So we are sorry to see each of them go and appreciate all the time and dedication they've given to the district um, and wish them all well in their future endeavors. Item B uh, is approval of one of our new assistant principals at Finneytown Elementary, Chad Yergren, who is with us back there. So if you haven't had a chance to meet Chad, I recommend stopping by and introducing yourself. Item C um, tells you about four of the new hires we've had. Um, June, June's a busy month with hiring for sure. So, and we're still, we're still in it. Um, so I expect August we'll have some additional hires. The approval um, for item E of Chris Callahan that had come through on the board agenda previously um, and then we have restructured the technology department and we're going down by one person and so adding responsibilities to Chris's position. So that is why the increase there. Um, you see approval for payment that work, um, work staff has done over the summer coming in. We have our ELA teams meeting, um, a literacy leadership team, our interview teams. We have a lot of staff who come in and put in hours for the interview process. Uh, the seventh grade team has been meeting. Item H um, is for the contract for Michelle Yao. She's actually an intervention specialist at St. X. They choose to use part of their um, 
IDEA funds for that, and so then they're technically employed by us since we manage those funds for them. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, we have our SRO, there's item I, the approval of that contract. Um, and everything I've heard, it'll continue to be Officer Smith, so that is great news. And then we have some agreements with Hamilton County, the ones that you see, JK and L, are all for the preschool specifically contract with them for um, what we offer for our students attending preschool and then um, item N is annual so it, it happens every year at this time where we re recognize our support organizations um, we want to continue that and then FAA the Finneytown Athletic Association isn't a support organization but we consider them an official community partner Item O talks about the general liability insurance for those. You may notice secondary PTA is not on there, um, and that is because they opt to get their insurance through their own um, program rather than through us. And then it's kind of exciting, item P, um, a few more change orders for the new building, but as we're reaching the end of the project, we're thinking there won't be too many more of them. Um, back to item C and just for clarification the date on there is through June 12th all the other dates I thought were through June 30th is there a reason that one's different which one is C approval of contracts one year limited certified the new okay. teachers yeah. um, I think June 12th um, was specified because of the, uh, the late start Can I ask, uh, I don't know if uh, you would know or you might know, uh, but for the uh, permanent key cores, I read that when for um, okay. item P for one of the change orders, it says have the construction team rather than the district install the permanent key cores. I wasn't familiar with that term. So um, we're, we're just talking about the locks for all the doors. Okay. Uh, at one point, our maintenance staff was going to do that, hit each door and, and put those in. And a decision was made that this was a better. I didn't make that. That's simpler. No, I was just curious, uh, especially because of regards to related to school security. So uh -huh. I wasn't sure if it was some sort of special locking system or anything. I like think that, it's the so. same equipment, just different installers. Great. And, and one thing, uh, do we know? And you may not know, may not know now, but do we know if those locks can lock from the inside and not just from the outside? What do you mean by that? Can you lock them with a key from the inside, or do you have to open up the door in order to lock the key? Lock the, if in order to lock them from none the of the doors do not stay unlocked unless you like use an Allen key to open them. Okay. Um, so the key cores right I now, see. if you go over there, they're all colored orange, and those are the temporary cores that will be replaced. Um, so yeah. So I mean, they'll automatically stay locked. All yeah, the they don't. Yeah, they don't unlock. Like, I mean, unless you use a key. But you can still open them from the inside, but not from the outside yes. window. Yes, yeah, that's a safety thing. Okay. You cannot, no, you cannot sure. lock, yeah, or so you prevent people from exiting. So as long as they're all, all automatically locked, then that's kind of my safety concern as far yeah. as that's concerned. So. Yeah, you just can't, yeah. Any kind of interior door always has to open out. Great. And I'm sure we'll have more questions on security. Yeah. Uh, it's 11. Yeah. Thanks, Graham. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Can we have a roll call vote? Mr. Ray? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Ms. Lee? Yes. Ms. McMullen? Yes. Motion passes. Moving on to item 10, approval of contract renewal. This is Dave's contract here, effective August 1st. Do I have a motion? So moved. Can I? I'll second. Okay. Do you want to discuss anything, Dave? Do we have any, any discussion? I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Just thank the board for considering <laughs> this contract. Any other questions or discussion? All right. Roll, is that a roll call vote? Yes. Okay. Mr. Reed? Yes. 
Ms. Lee? Yes. Ms. McMullen? Yes. Mr. Ray? Yes. Motion passes. I keep waiting on Tony to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, item 11, action steps. So I, do you have any recorded, Dave? Um, just about the DEI, DEI committee um, to yep. uh, or, send out or rather, applications for two communities. Or rather the, the, the sorry, what was Beyond the Differences of any town committee. Yes. yes. I'm curious who Tony has in mind. For, for hiring, um, for the leaders, mm -hmm. we are so it's not us choosing them yet. We're going to create an application. Okay. And he sent me the template that he uses currently for another organization. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to edit it to match our needs, and then I'll send it to you guys so we can you know, finalize it, it and get it out to the community. And then um, please, please apply. Is all I have to say. And as of right now, those are volunteer positions. Yeah, right now, we don't have anything figured out past that okay. yet. Okay, do we have any other action items? Um, we were also going to get information about um, family involvement. Yes, and Jen's going to take that one. Yep. And then I had a question about um, the Whitaker uh, Elementary uh, de uh, demo bids. That's something that we gave uh, Dr. Banks at our last meeting to look for, or I think it was the last meeting, to look for bids for the demolition of Whitaker. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's, she's not here obviously, but uh, that's something that we, that, that we, yeah. that we can get an update on that, and, and that would be great. Do you know anything about that, Dave, as far as? Um, I know nothing has, has happened in the last month. I'm not aware of anything. <laughs> I shouldn't say anything. Nothing is happening. All right. Okay. Moving on to announcements. We, the Fannytown Board of Education, will hold a special meeting on August 11th, 5 p.m. here in the Media Center of Fannytown Secondary Campus. In order to preview the 22-23 safety plan, the agenda will come out before that meeting. There are a few other topics that we will be discussing as well. And then the next regular meeting of the Fannytown Board of Education will take place on Monday, August 15th at 6.30 p.m. here in the Media Center. Open forum will begin at 6 p.m. So I have a motion to adjourn. I'd like to move. Anything else? I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.